We like to think that we're as advanced in society as we've ever been and that everything we create is incredibly futuristic, but we've got so much tech at our disposal. When you look back through the centuries, our ancestors could do an awful lot with very little, and some examples seem impossible for the times. From an iron column that won't rust to nuclear weapons, here are 20 oldest technologies that scientists can't explain. Number 20. Medieval Blacksmiths Whenever we want any tools, fixtures, or anything made out of metal these days, we just go to a retail store and purchase something that's typically been made by a machine somewhere in the world. But back in medieval times, even before medieval times, if you wanted anything made like cutlery, a sword, or armor, you had to call upon a medieval blacksmith. Blacksmiths were in pretty much every town, village, and city during medieval times, and they were incredibly skilled people capable of producing everything from nails and doorknobs to armor, swords, and everything in between. Now, initially, blacksmiths would create the intense heat they needed to twist and forge iron with charcoal, but they eventually transitioned to coal. They also transitioned from iron to steel to make weapons. During times of war, blacksmiths were at their busiest, making sure all soldiers had everything they needed to keep safe in battle. As you might imagine, the high volume of goods they were producing meant that they were becoming more sophisticated. Eventually, mass production industries were popping up in countries like Italy and Germany. When you see the detail in your average door knocker from hundreds of years ago before we had access to today's advanced tech, it's hard not to be amazed by their capabilities. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Voynich Manuscript Today, we make use of artificial intelligence in almost everything. We've even utilized it to solve some of the world's greatest mysteries. But interestingly, not even AI can solve the Voynich Manuscript. Even while being surrounded by some of the latest and greatest advancements, this old book remains a complete mystery. The Voynich Manuscript is a handwritten and illustrated codex in a writing system that no one has been able to identify, although we just call it Voynichese since the manuscript is named after the Polish book dealer Wilfred Voynich, who purchased it in 1912. And that's how little scientists really know. We've named a book after someone who owned it because we can't get any other answers. So far, we've been able to work out that the material it's written on dates back to the early 15th century, and it might have been put together during the Italian Renaissance period. Some people think it might be a natural or constructed language, or maybe a type of code. Others think the entire thing is a hoax, but it would be a pretty elaborate one since this manuscript has around 240 pages, including foldable sheets, along with illustrations, diagrams, astrological symbols, and fictitious plants. Many, many cryptographers have studied it, including some of the best American and British codebreakers. And so far, we've still got nothing. Number 18. Woots Steel we have access to many different steel types in this modern age, but there's one that's more superior and less known about than most, and that's Wootz Steel. This is the name to describe a high-grade iron ore steel that was first known about in 400 BCE in southern and south-central India and Sri Lanka. Blacksmiths in the Middle East would use Indian subcontinent Wootz ingots to create amazing steel weaponry described as Damascus steel. Now, you might think that Wootz is just a particular type of iron ore, but it's actually a manufactured product. Blacksmiths would use a sealed and heated crucible to introduce carbon into iron ore. Once transformed into weaponry, you'd have a Damascus steel blade that was sharp, hard, and could bend at up to 90 degrees without breaking. And it was quite the scientific process, which is incredible when you think about how limited their technology was. 
Blacksmiths would use a pre-modern iron manufacturing method known as crucible and place pieces of bloomery iron and carbon-rich materials into crucibles. These would then be sealed and heated for days at temperatures of up to 1,400 degrees Celsius or 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit. During that time, the iron absorbs the carbon and becomes liquefied, which separates out the slag. The resultant Wootz cakes were then cooled slowly and exported to weapons manufacturers in the Middle East to create Damascus steel blades. Number 17. Greek Fire Many pretty impressive weapons were used during medieval times and even before then, like crossbows, trebuchets, and lances. We can easily recreate those today, but there's one we haven't been able to recreate and one that has boggled experts for centuries, and that's Greek Fire. It's an ancient incendiary weapon from the 7th century that the Byzantine Empire used, especially at sea. Greek fire was a type of liquid concoction that enemies weren't able to recreate even when they managed to get their hands on it. They couldn't even replicate the weapons used to fire it. The Byzantines described Greek fire as liquid fire and sea fire, and it was heated, pressurized, and pushed through a siphon to light enemy ships on fire. And yeah, sure, that's what fire does, but this fire was different. Even when it hit the water, it would keep burning. The flames might have even become more fierce when they came into contact with water. The only way to extinguish the flames was with a mixture of vinegar, sand, and old urine. The formula for the fire was a closely guarded secret, and it was only handed down through generations of the Kalinikos family and Byzantine emperors. Number 16. The Phaistos Desk if you pay a visit to the Archaeological Museum of Heraklion, you might just be fortunate to see something that has scientists shrugging their shoulders. The Phaistos Disc The Phaistos Disc is a 5.9-inch disc of fired clay supposedly from the Minoan Palace of Phaistos on the island of Crete. There are stamped symbols forming a spiral on both sides and at least 45 distinct signs and 241 tokens. These are all pressed into the clay in a clockwise direction toward the center of the disc. Italian archaeologist Luigi Pernier first discovered it in 1908, and to this day, its purpose has been disputed. Both professional and amateur archaeologists have attempted to decipher the code on either side, and none have been successful. Most people believe that it's some form of alphabet, syllabary, or logography, but there's not enough context to draw an accurate conclusion. Experts can't even agree on whether or not it's a fake. Many archaeologists say it's an authentic piece dating back to the Middle or Late Minoan Bronze Age, but a handful also think it's a forgery. We may never have the answer. Number 15. A 1,600-year-old iron column that won't rust. Iron rusts. That's just what it does. But not all iron rusts. In the QP complex in Delhi, there's a 1,600-year-old pillar standing at 23.6 feet tall, 3.6 feet of which is underground, that hasn't rusted. Given its age, you'd assume it would no longer even be standing, but it almost looks like it was newly installed. The pillar sits on an iron bar grid soldered with lead onto a stone pavement. It has a wide base and a narrow top, and the whole column is thought to weigh around 6 tons, if not more. It's definitely made of iron, so scientists are pretty stumped as to why it's not a rusty pile of dust by now. The iron is believed to contain high levels of phosphorus, which, when combined with the iron, oxides as the weather changes from wet to dry. The mineral levels are higher than they would be if they were made today because they didn't add lime and instead used phosphorus wood. Now, there are two possible theories for why the pillar hasn't rusted away. The most believable is due to the properties of the iron and the processing. The second relates to the surrounding environment, which may not provide ideal rusting conditions. Number 14. The Mysterious Viking Sword Ulfbert Imagine being an archaeologist and uncovering an artifact that makes use of technology that you didn't think existed until hundreds of years later. That was the reality for archaeologists who found the Ulfbert Sword. This sword, which had an inscription that read plus V-L-F-B-E-R-H-T plus on the blade, dated back to between the 9th and 11th centuries. Such a sword could only ever belong to the most elite of the elite because it had incredible strength, which made it expensive. Such was its sharpness that it could cut through a lower quality weapon, or even bone, with a single blow. Now, here's the kicker. The technology for making this sword was hundreds of years ahead of its time. It contained crucible steel with a carbon content 
content as high as 1.2%. Crucible steel was produced in India, then Sri Lanka, from 300 BC, followed by Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Scientists think the steel in this sword comes from India. Before this sword was found, scientists thought that the technology that made it possible to harden steel wasn't available until the Industrial Revolution, but it clearly existed 800 years earlier. Number 13. Nanotechnology it's only been very recently that researchers have been learning about the color-changing properties of materials that have been embedded with nanoparticles. They've been looking into this cool party trick in the hope that they'll be able to perform medical tests cheaply in the future. But we're actually 1,600 years behind the eight ball. As it turns out, the Romans already figured out what this cool nanotechnology was all about. When a Roman-made Lycurgus cup, which is a glass drinking goblet, was brought into a museum in the 1950s, experts knew it was a pretty special special cup. Although it wasn't until the 1990s that researchers discovered that the goblet could change color. The goblet appears to be made with tiny gold and silver particles embedded into the glass. In standard lighting, the glass has a jade background. If you look at it from behind, the jade parts are ruby red. This color-changing effect is caused by electrons vibrating when they strike photons. Surely the Romans couldn't have known that, but they definitely knew something because this effect was intentional. They used the color-changing effects to create stories. On the Lycurgus Cup, they were able to tell the story of King Lycurgus in a tangle of grapevines, which was his penance for treason against the god of wine Dionysus in Greek mythology. Number 12. Vimana, the Ancient Flying Machine Flying is a relatively new concept. The first flights in a powered aircraft were in 1903, and we've certainly come a long way since then. But what if we've been flying for much longer and there just hasn't been a lot of evidence? And that's where the Vimana comes in. Vimana can mean many things like temple or palace, but it can also mean mythological flying machines. This word was actually used in the context of mythical flying machines in Sanskrit texts. They were described as machines that could fly within the Earth's atmosphere into space and under the water. They were available in many different shapes and sizes, like cigar-shaped and saucer-shaped, with at least two or more engines and had deadly weapons for use in warfare, although they were also used for ordinary travel and transport. In the texts, Vimanus flew at great heights with propulsive wind and quicksilver and were able to cover a lot of ground while moving up, down, and forward. They were also called Shining Flying Cars and Celestial Cars and were stored in Vimana Griha, which is a hangar. Spookily, ancient Hindu poems, which are the oldest of all Indian texts, describe them as well. By 1975, Swami Dayanada Saraswati had studied the concept for a long time and concluded that these flying machines did exist in ancient India. If so, what happened to them? Number 11. Codex Gigas the Codex Gigas, also referred to as the Devil's Bible, is the largest known medieval manuscript. It was created in the early 13th century in Bohemia, which is now the Czech Republic, and stands at 36.2 inches tall, 19.7 inches wide, and 8.6 inches thick. When it was first created, it contained 320 vellum sheets, but eight have been removed for unknown reasons. As the entire Devil's Bible is made of calf or donkey skin, you can just imagine how heavy it is with 320 pages pages of skin. It weighs 165 pounds. So what's in it? Well, it contains the entire Latin Vulgate version of the Bible, excluding the books of Acts and Revelation. All content is written in Latin. It also has a calendar, magic formulae, local records, and other interesting stories from throughout history. It's believed to have been written and put together by a monk who sold his soul to the devil. You can see illuminations in yellow, green, blue, red, and gold throughout with capital letters intentionally illuminated. As the entire book has been consistently written with no changes, it looks as though it was written over a very short time, although scientists are beginning to wonder whether it took 20 years to complete. Number 10. Nuclear Weapons 12,000 Years Ago what if I was to tell you that 12,000 years ago, nuclear bombs were detonated in India, killing half a million people? You'd probably say I was insane, or at the very minimum, wrong. But that is what's now being claimed. Conspiracy theory and UFO websites say there's evidence of an ancient blast near Jodhpur in a desert region. Their evidence is based on an ancient text in a part of the country where high levels of radiation were detected. According to Disclose.tv, Hindu texts from thousands of years ago reference advanced weapons 
weaponry that makes it sound like atomic bombs were set off on Earth about 12,000 years ago. The theories center around passages from Ramayana and Mahabharata Sanskrit epics written about the Kurukshetra War in the 8th or 9th century BC. The website also allegedly translated some of the text to read, a single projectile charged with all the power in the universe, an incandescent column of smoke and flame as bright as 10,000 suns rose in all its splendor. It was an unknown weapon, an iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death which reduced to ashes an entire race. But as it generally goes with conspiracy websites, experts found no evidence outside of conspiracy forums to suggest any areas of high radiation or nuclear weapons 12,000 years ago. Number 9. The Yanaguni Monument in 1987, a diver decided to explore an area off the coast of the southern Ryukyu Islands in Japan when he found something incredible. About 82 feet below the ocean surface, he saw what appeared to be perfectly carved steps with straight edges that formed a stacked pyramid-like monument. What he had discovered was about 164 feet long and 65 feet wide, and it was believed to be over 10,000 years old. Today, it's known as the Yanaguni Monument, and it's a huge scuba diver attraction. But what is it? Well, that depends on who you ask. It's definitely one of the most unusual underwater monuments in the world, but no one's actually sure if it's human-made by prehistoric Jomon people in Japan that used to inhabit the islands around 12,000 BC, or if it's just a bunch of natural formations. Many people think it's remains left behind by a long-lost Pacific civilization, but experts do tend to think it's more likely to be created naturally, similar to the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland that consists of interlocking basalt columns formed by a volcanic eruption millions of years ago. And it's hard to know what to think, because it really does look intentionally built. There are arched entrances, narrow passageways, and angles that seem perfectly positioned at 90 degrees. What do you think? Number 8. Roman Dodecahedron the brilliant thing about the digital age we live in is that we've got a running record of everything we invent. We can only speculate about inventions centuries ago because the same records simply don't exist. That's especially true for Roman dodecahedrons. Roman dodecahedrons are small and hollow copper alloy objects cast into the shape of a dodecahedron with 12 flat pentagonal faces. Each of the faces has circular holes, but they're all of different sizes and link to the hollow center. These unusual objects date back to between the 2nd and 4th century AD and were first discovered in 1739. Since then, researchers have found over a hundred more in a range of locations like Wales, Spain, Germany, France, Italy, and Hungary. They all range in size from 1.6 inches to 4.3 inches with 12 faces, but a Roman icosahedron with 20 faces has also been found in Germany. All of these objects appear to be made with intention, but their purpose remains a mystery. Some experts believe they might be distance estimates estimating devices or something that farmers would use to work out the best time to sow their winter grain. However, since some have been discovered in coin hoards, there's reason to believe they are connected to coins or at least hold great value. You might also hear whispers about these Roman dodecahedrons being used for fortune-telling purposes or as some kind of religious device, but the truth is, we might never get to the bottom of it. Number 7. Ancient Surgeries the surgeons we have at our disposal today are amongst the most talented to have ever walked the earth. We trust them with our lives and know they can perform a variety of complicated procedures with relative ease. But aside from their skills, we also know that they can do what they do because they have the best equipment and technology. So it's pretty absurd to think that some of the most complex and successful surgeries were performed about 2,500 years ago. Shushruta was an ancient Indian physician known as the father of Indian medicine medicine and father of plastic surgery. He invented many different surgical procedures and is highly regarded in the world of plastic surgery and Ayurvedic medicine. Sushruta practiced medicine in northern India and was described as a great healer. He developed complex surgical techniques and was one of the first to use the head of an ant to sew sutures. Sushruta is also known to have invented cosmetic surgery, and a book he wrote provides detailed instructions for other surgeons on how to perform rhinoplasty. Now, of course, anesthetic wasn't really a thing back then, so patients were encouraged to drink heavily before their procedure, and wine was used as the anesthetic of choice. Once the patient was adequately drunk, they'd be tied to a wooden table before the rhinoplasty was performed. 
Sushruta was also a great believer in holistic health, so he would provide the instruction manuals for other physicians to treat illnesses naturally. He also believed in optimal health being achieved through the harmony of mind and body. Number 6. 2,200-year-old 2, battery it's hard to imagine what people would have needed electricity for thousands of years ago, but clearly they needed it for something, because we've discovered a 2,200-year-old battery. A clay jar was found near Baghdad in Iraq, which is now believed to be the oldest known electric battery. It supposedly comes from the Parthian Empire, which was an ancient Asian culture ruling the Middle East from 247 BC to 228 AD. The jar dates back to around 200 BC. German archaeologist Wilhelm Koenig was the first to describe it. The earthen jar was about 5.5 inches tall, 3 inches wide, and had a sealed opening with an asphalt plug, a copper sheet rolled into a tube, and a copper disc held in place with asphalt. There was also an iron rod in the asphalt plug that hung down into the middle of the copper tube without touching it. The battery jar may have also contained an acidic liquid, such as vinegar, which would have made it capable of producing a small current of up to 2 volts. Why they'd need a battery is anyone's guess, but it's believed that because Romans and Greeks used to rely on electric fish to treat pain, they might have used the battery to numb a part of the body for pain relief. Number 5. Stone Spheres in Costa Rica Scientists have long been baffled about why there are about 300 stone spheres located across Costa Rica. Scientific studies began into the unusual stones in the 1930s and 40s, and we still don't have any definitive answers. The stones are not perfectly round, but they are smooth and very close to a perfect sphere. They also range in size from a mere few inches to several feet. Most have been made with granodiorite, which is quite a hard rock similar to granite, and some contain tool marks to suggest they were purposefully made into spheres. Experts think ancient people from the Keys Valley might have chosen large boulders and shaped them to form spheres by removing outer layers. They then polished them with leather or sand to create a smooth finish. To this day, we don't know why they were made or when they were made, but they continue to be quite a popular tourist attraction in Costa Rica. Number 4. Sound Magnifying Ancient Chamber When workers were cutting cisterns to create a new housing development in 1902 in Paula, Malta, they broke through the roof of a long-forgotten Neolithic underground structure. Known now as the Hypogeum of Hal Safliani, it's a structure that dates back to 3300 to 3000 BC during the Safliani phase and is believed to have been a cemetery and sanctuary. At first, workers tried to hide the temple, but it was eventually found and studies got underway. Before long, archaeologists had found the remains of over 7,000 people, and it's now regarded as one of the best preserved examples of a Maltese temple building culture. The structure was entirely underground and had three levels with halls and chambers made of lime. Stone. There were steps, lintels, doorways, and a complex layout with middle and lower levels. The upper level is one meter above the surface and has man-made caves and several rooms, some of which were used for burials. The lower level didn't have any bones or remains, just water, so it might have been a type of storage level. The middle was the most interesting of all. It had a central chamber, a decorated room, a holy of holies, and, most extraordinarily, a room called the Oracle Room. This room was rectangular and had the unusual feature of powerful acoustic resonance. Any sound made inside this room could be magnified by up to a hundred times. It's not known whether this was an intentional feature or entirely by accident. Number 3. The World's First Temple – Gobekli Tepe We've always been pretty impressed by Stonehenge, mainly because of how old it is. But there's another famous structure that'll grab your attention, and it's 6,000 years older. It's in Turkey and is known as the Gobekli Tepe. It's believed to be the world's first temple. The temple was discovered about six miles from Urfa, which is a southeastern Turkey ancient city. It was here that Klaus Schmidt found huge 11,000-year-old carved stones that appear to be put in place and crafted by people who didn't have any pottery or metal tools. The site is quite remarkable. There are standing stones arranged in a circle, four rings of pillars positioned in a T-shape, and elaborate carvings. Some of the pillars have been carved into animals like vultures, foxes, lions, and scorpions. The tallest is about 16 feet tall, and they are thought to weigh up to 10 tons. 
One of the stone rings is about 65 feet across, and Klaus thinks it might be the first human-built holy place. It's about a thousand feet above the valley and provides an incredible view of the horizon. Klaus thinks prehistoric people might have stood at that location and gazed out over the rivers, wild animals, and fruit and nut trees. Number 2. The First Earthquake Detector we have a great deal of technology at our disposal to detect and measure the ground during an earthquake. These instruments are called seismoscopes and seismometers. They can't predict earthquakes, but they can provide us with interesting data to learn how earthquakes work. It's easy to assume that seismometers are new instruments since they're pretty highly advanced equipment, but they've actually been around for hundreds of years. The very first one was invented by a Chinese astronomer, engineer, and mathematician called Zhang Heng who lived in China in 132 AD. The instrument he developed was six feet in diameter and looked like a wine jar. It had eight dragons on the outside of the barrel to create a kind of a compass, and the dragons had small bronze balls in their mouth. Eight bronze toads sat beneath the dragons with wide open mouths to receive the balls from the dragons. When a seismic wave was detected, one of the bronze balls would drop from the dragon into the mouth of the frog, and it was the sound of this happening that would indicate where the earthquake was coming from. Number 1. The Antikythera Device who would have thought that a chunk of bronze found by divers 115 years ago off a Greek island would change our understanding of human history? It seems far-fetched, but it's true. An archaeologist was looking through items found in the wreck of a 2,000-year-old vessel off Antikythera when they saw a strange thing with brass gears and dials inside something the size of a mantle clock. Sure, the other items found, like pots, jewelry, and vases, were interesting, but this was on a whole different level. Archaeologists called it the Antikythera Mechanism, and it seems like it might be the world's very first computer. Inside the machine, or at least what's left of it, you can see two dozen gears on top of each other that appear to be calibrated with incredible precision. It appears like some kind of clock, but we may never know for sure. The most thorough scientific analysis performed by Princeton science historian Derek DeSoya Price in 1959 provided some evidence to suggest that it might have been used to predict planet and star positioning in the sky based on the calendar month. Sure, we've all got the coolest gadgets now, but isn't it odd to think that some people were at the peak of innovation hundreds of years ago and they managed to create things that we can't even hope to replicate today or that kickstarted what we're capable of now? Which of these technologies surprise you the most? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!